Okay, everybody, as I promised, one of the dynamic speakers from TEDx Fargo, uh, also a heck of a good guy uh, and a lover of McChickens as well. <laughs> we have the wonderful Chris Holly of Chris Holly Architects. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Uh, I like that you have a namesake like I do, that you put your name on everything, right? Yeah, I like to be in the creative business. <laughs> Chris, what is it that you do? Because uh, I obviously know because I asked you in the studio with us. But for those who are just tuning in, who in the world is Chris Holly? So Chris Holly is uh, is an architect here in town and also has a construction company as well. Okay. Uh, and you undersold the heck out of that, Chris. Uh, you just casually, oh, I have an architecture company and, and a construction company. Uh, give us some details because those, those that don't know, Chris is the guy. Chris is the guy who you want to associate with if you have uh, some creative design and some opportunity. And if ever with somebody blushing on radio, it's happening right now. It's oh, really adorable. Sure. <laughs> sure. uh, Chris, what are some of the projects that you've done uh, around the area that people will be maybe familiar with? Uh, well, I think, you know, the, the first part of our, my career was mostly residential. So uh, Sky Barn is one of them. Fargo Laundry is another. Um, some of the restaurant work here in town is uh, the Boulevard, which recently just opened. Blackridge headquarters, um, the Brew in Purim and Detroit Lakes, uh, as well as a number of residential projects. Uh, you, you've been featured in a lot of magazines and, uh, and local and national publications. Uh, what's been your favorite project that you've worked on? Well, I would say they're all kind of unique in that way, and I think all of them kind of have their own merit, mm -hmm. and so they all have their own story, which is kind of like the best part of what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think recently the, you know, obviously the governor's residence is kind of our latest and greatest project and, uh, you know, probably one of our more difficult projects in terms of uh, complexity, but, uh, you know, they're all pretty rewarding and kind of their, uh, in, in their own way. I love a guy who just casually drops like, oh yeah, I'm building the mansion for the governor. Oh, right. No, no, and I, I know, I know you roll your eyes at that because I'm just giving you a hard time because we're know. buddies. Uh, but that's a huge accomplishment in all of the the people in the state. How did you land the gig to build the the home for the governor? Um, well, so you know that's that's an interview process, and you know we actually had to compete for that job. Um, but that job is based on uh, basically a portfolio of work. So all the work that we had been doing. For the last 10 years leading up to that was kind of the, um, oh, I don't know, the big push um, towards getting that job at the end of the day. And so you're you're building not only and, and designing in Fargo, but now in Bismarck as well. Do you have other places that, that draw you to business? Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm a Western North Dakota kid. And so, you know, not only do I, you know, I went to school at NDSU uh, and thought, you know, I'm going to land in Fargo eventually. Um, but I also... Uh, do a lot of work in Western North Dakota by nature of just connections and family and some of that. And so do a lot of work in Minot. We have a, a restaurant in Minot, the Starving Rooster, uh, that uh, that I'm pretty heavily involved with. And then also some other design projects in and around Bismarck. Uh, not only that, but I was just at the gym this morning. Yes, I had to drop that I was at the gym this morning. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. And I just talked about McChickens a moment yeah. ago, too. So uh, I'm a walking contradiction, Chris. Uh, but I was at the gym this morning and I was talking with a buddy and his brother just had his place at the lake finished by you as well a couple of weeks ago. And I, I'll leave their names uh, as a bit anonymous. But you do a lot of things out in lakes country, too, don't you? We do a ton of stuff with the lakes. In fact, I would say... Uh, maybe 50% of our business is at the lake. And Why is that? You know, I think it's uh, really interesting. It seems like most people in Fargo-Moorhead uh, will spend a little more energy and a little more time and uh, and take uh, and think a little harder about what they do at the lake than they do in town sometimes. And There's creativity out. There's uh, a lot of creativity. Yeah. Yep. So how are you bringing that creativity to Fargo then, Chris? Uh, well, I mean, I think no matter what project it is, they all kind of come with their own set of uh, constraints and, and, and sort of a context of issues or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And uh, no matter what that is, I'd like to think that design is always kind of playing a part in that, no matter what kind of project it is. Uh, and I've spent some time uh, digging in deep to find out what it is that motivates you. You just love to create, don't you, Chris? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm very much uh, kind of come from an artistic background and I've got you know, my dad's a designer and my, my mom's a furniture maker. So, you know, this, this kind of made sense for me. And I think, okay. you know, it's always been a part of my life. So with this, uh, now you have an opportunity to speak at TEDx on Thursday. Mm -hmm. How are, are the, the listening audience or how is the listening audience? How are the people in the community, uh, going to receive what you say? Is it, is it a sales pitch when you're up there or are you just talking about your background? What, what can people expect to hear from you this Thursday at the civic? 
Yeah, I mean, I, it's certainly not a sales pitch. Uh, I, I think the you know one of the one of the things that when I think about doing projects is is that it's more than just about building a building. And so for me, the the kind of the tagline for what I'm doing is uh, called crafting legacies, which is essentially what I think an architect's responsibility is versus just building a building. So crafting a legacy. Uh, Unpack that a little more for me so I can understand. Well, I think, uh, you know, buildings for building sake is kind of uh, thinking about building as shelter. And I think about it more of as kind of a cultural artifact and more of a kind of a special place making for, for people and, and telling a story about the people in the place. And so that's, the, that's kind of the craft piece. Uh, the legacy thing in my mind is, um, you know, hopefully doing a, a project that's worth saving and that the next generation sort of, you know, holds on to and maybe wants to... Uh, restore and, and and preserve and that that's kind of the that's the mindset of an architect versus maybe somebody who's just in the business to build buildings uh what you do is fascinating and i want to keep talking with you but we're going to go to break here in just a moment chris uh those of you if you're tuning in you want to get in touch with chris you can of course track him down or we'd love to have you connect with us and we can just hand off that baton for you because dang it my wife and i have now hired chris and his company to do work on our house so it's the governor's mansion it's fargo laundry and then it's the hatch kitchen i think that's how it <laughs> works out uh chris we're thrilled to have you in our life let's keep you on the air uh but in the in the meantime head to live fargomorehead.com folks get connected with us and find out what your home is worth. This is Real Estate Radio with Eric Hatch. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio. As always, I'm your host, Eric Hatch, and I'm elated and excited and thrilled and tickled and everything else you could ask for to have Chris Hawley still in studio with us. Chris is one of the featured speakers at TEDx Fargo coming up this Thursday. And in addition, I get the privilege of hosting TEDx Fargo with Tanya Stendi. So it's going to be a delightful Thursday. If you don't have your tickets yet, uh, go online, track it down. You will be able to, with uh, whatever you search for, TEDx Fargo, and give them the code HATCH10 to save yourself 10 bucks on your ticket. Free money in your pocket means uh, more smiles on your face. But Chris, uh, we've been talking about, uh, what did you say, creating a legacy? Was that right? Yeah, crafting crafting legacy. a legacy. There yep. I go, ruining your tagline Oof. already. Uh, crafting a legacy is a, a beautiful and immaculate and an incredible uh, thing that you're doing. What I want to know specifically is how did this all start? Because this is this is part of maybe what you're going to talk about at TEDx on Thursday. Uh, but your story is is pretty unique on how in the world you got started with this with this now uh, legacy that you're leaving Fargo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, you know, I'm an NDSU kid. I and at the time I didn't, uh, you know, from Western North Dakota, I end up at NDSU. And I thought at the, you know, when I went to NDSU that I had to leave in order to sort of, <laughs> uh, sort of make a career and make a kind of a go of it. And I went to Minneapolis and ultimately realized that the the big time stuff was not necessarily for me. And that really, uh, kind of the the magic of uh, kind of creating a career that you wanted was actually right here in Fargo. And so I came back and. Uh, about 14 years ago and uh, ended up setting up shop here and uh, it's kind of been the best decision and I think what's great about um, Fargo and kind of the, the community around Fargo is that uh, they embrace you and they you know I think they kind of make the most out of trying to um, support you and what you're doing and so I you know I've, I've been lucky enough to for a number of people to sort of uh, give me opportunity for unique projects and uh, in the beginning it was a lot of small projects but uh, the irony is that those small projects have now grown into larger projects by nature of you know taking the care on the small ones first. So, uh, this is this is a fascinating story for me because uh, I, I said in our last segment that you're the guy, and I mean it, Chris. Uh, you're the one that I think people are looking to that that is setting the new trend. You're raising the bar for design in Fargo. How did that come to be? I mean, was it? Was it just I went to Minneapolis and learned the stuff from there, or uh, is it ingrained? Is it in your study? Is it uh, because you value things differently? Help me understand that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's all of it. You know, like my mom's a furniture maker, for instance, mm -hmm. right? And so everything is in her world is all about quality and making things that are uh, sort of artistically put together. And uh, I mean, I think that's I've seen that my entire life. My dad's kind of a super creative, designerly dude, and. Uh, so, you know, I mean, he's always thinking about what, how we can do something differently and better. And so those two pieces have certainly uh, guided me as I've walked through, uh, you know, and then I've had some opportunity. Uh, you know, we built a, I built a small cabin for my mom uh, 15 years ago that uh, was, was kind of like this, uh, 
special storytelling moment with for our family and you know we're kind of heavily scandinavian and and have a big farm background so we ended up with this red barn scandinavian thing and right and uh and i think a lot of people kind of lashed on to that and said you know what it's more than just a building it's it's kind of tells uh tells a story about the people that are in it now what about your personal home because uh it's mm -hmm. interesting if, if any of you are active on facebook and if you like uh chris holly's page uh he he rarely posts and then put up uh <clears throat> maybe you did or your marketing team did or, or your i've got somebody did. now okay good so. <laughs> smart man yeah <laughs> Uh, somebody put up just a couple of pictures of your house before and after. Yep. Uh, your personal residence has completely been transformed because I think if people you're listening right now and you're thinking, okay, Chris is going to build these new projects. It's building the slate cabin. It's building the governor's residence. Uh, but restoring and remodeling is something that you are fabulous at. And you did it with your own personal home. Walk us That's through those right. details. Yeah, so uh, about two years ago, uh, I was on a run with a friend and w I ran by... Uh, a house and and I and I looked at the my friend and I said you know what that has got to be the ugliest house in Fargo Moorhead. <laughs> and I, I know the house and <laughs> and I've seen the house and you were right. <laughs> yep. And I said who'd be dumb enough to buy that? And then I went on a run the next week and I said you know what there's a, a lot of opportunity kind of buried underneath uh, all of the, the the garbage that was kind of glued to this building. Right. And so we stripped the garbage off and and uh, kind of reinvented a, a project uh, overnight. <laughs> and and, and you drive by now, and you went from being the oh house to the ooh house in your neighborhood, yeah. right? Yep, that's right. Uh, how'd your wife deal with that? Well, I mean, there's because <laughs> <laughs> you lived there when you did it. right? Well, there, we lived there when we did it, and uh, you know, there was a big trust thing. You know, I think uh, she was like, "There's no way that this is going to end well." <laughs> For, and, for the house or your marriage? Well, maybe both. <laughs> and uh, so a leap of faith. In it. But at the end of the day, I think uh, we're all pretty happy about it. it you know, remodels aren't easy because you got to live through them. But yep. uh, in the same breath, uh, we're, we're tickled the, on what we have now. So Now, here's what my wife and I have done. And I talked about it in the last segment is uh, we decided that we're going to make some changes to our house. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a house that was built in 1992, a fabulous construction. And we bought it four years ago. We kind of went through and painted everything. We put lipstick on a pig. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't. We didn't redo the things in our home uh, that were the long lasting. We instead got through it for a few years. And now some paint on like cabinets is chipping, and it just is starting to look a little bit run down. And so we called on you. Mm -hmm. um, those of you that are listening, I want you to understand this: is uh, I get my choice of of people just like you do of who to work with and. The reason why I went with Chris and his company is because of what he talked about with his mom, uh, and, and that is the attention to detail, and that mm -hmm. the small things matter, and that that kind of uh, finite design and finish work makes a lot of the difference. Quality uh, over quantity. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do quantity and you can do quality, but uh, I'm going to use this as a commercial time, Chris, because I think it's important. Those of you, if, you if, if you're looking to design something, if you're looking to build something, if you're looking to recreate something, uh, give Chris a chance. Uh, his work is, is second to none, and there's some really great people in town, but I put Chris at the top of that list for what you do uh, because I'm putting my, my own family in your hand. So Chris, if somebody's thinking about uh, redesigning, what are some things that they should know? Some tips, some tricks, uh, and, and ways to, to save a buck or to do it right? Um, you know, I think in my mind, whenever we evaluate a project, we, we look at it from from the bones perspective and trying to figure out, is there a better way to utilize the existing space mm -hmm. first? And so instead of thinking about an addition, maybe there's a way to carve out uh, sort of a, a totally different way of thinking about how you live in a place just by nature of uh, some small alterations. And so mm -hmm. we start there. Ultimately, if, if you can't get there and it's just like, you know, trying to f uh, fit 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag, then, you know, eventually you got to start talking about additions. But uh, it's amazing to me when you start to think about circulation and how people move through a space, how you can totally reinvent a place. Mm -hmm. Chris, uh, you're fabulous. I can't wait to hear you Thursday at TEDx Fargo. Those of you who are tuning in, go see Chris this Thursday at the Civic. Grab your tickets. And uh, heck, I'll be your host for the day, too. So we'll have <laughs> uh, a jolly good old time. Chris, thanks very much. In the meantime, go to livefargomorehead.com.